Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. In this video, we're going to take a look at the magazine that is utilized in an automatic tool changing system that I used on my uh, CNC router. Uh, this tool change system uh, works with an ER collet, so there had to be some pretty unique and special engineered solutions to make all of this work. Now on the magazine, it's constructed out of some very basic components, some angle aluminum, uh, square tubing, a solid piece of square uh, aluminum. Did a little bit of machining on it, uh, but overall it's quite simple to make and its function and uh, uh, machining of it was quite simple. Uh, the important thing to remember is you do have to work with a fair amount of precision when you machine it or create it because you need these tools to be in a very specific location uh, with very little deviation. Overall, the system seems to accommodate about a 5,000 slop between uh, the location of the drill or the tool as it's sitting in the magazine. Uh, I needed clearance there for it to easily go in and out. Um, so 5,000 slop seems to be well within the reason of it. And you'll notice on the uh, top side or the shank side of all these tools, there's a chamfer there, which helps guide it into the collet. Now as we go over the top of it, you'll see that this magazine holds 11 tools, and uh, the outer tubing works as a lock to hold the tools in there as we pull the collet off. Uh, furthermore, on the back side of it, or what would seem like the back side of this, you'll see that uh, back there we've got a simple, small air cylinder that actuates the locking mechanism, the outer tube, back and forth. And I use two micro switches to sense the closed position, or locked position, and the open position. Otherwise, quite simple. Uh, from a control point of view, I need a couple M codes, one to open it, one to close it, and I need to check those two micro switches to make sure it's in position. Other than that, it's quite simple. Now we'll take a look at uh, how it operates, and then we'll dive in a little bit more into the mechanical design. Here you can see the spindle coming down with the tool in it. The nut is loose. The sleeve will slide over, thus locking the tool into the magazine, and the spindle will retract. We'll jog over to the other tool, which is tool number 11 in this case, comes down, feeds over the shank of the tool, and the magazine is open, so the tool goes with the spindle as it retracts out of the magazine. There is enough friction between the collet and the tool that it just simply rides along. Um, the collet nut is slightly tensioned, but not uh, anything specific. Uh, as there is just enough static friction to hold the tool in the spindle as we transport it. I modeled up this design using uh, a, a product called Autodesk Fusion 360. I found this to be a very uh, great program for doing a lot of 3D design work. Um, but this is the whole magazine. Um, as mentioned earlier, it's got a couple of angle brackets that serve as the base. This orange colored or yellow colored area in the middle is the core of the magazine, and that's a solid piece of aluminum. And then here's the outer square tubing that serves as the locking mechanism. We spin it around this way. Uh, we've got a simple bracket to connect the air cylinder to that outer sleeve. Uh, this is, the, again, the small air cylinder. I believe it's about a 3 8 inch uh, piston in it. Not a lot of power, but more than adequate for what we're doing here. Uh, and the outboard end of that just simply mounts to the, the one foot back here. Um, we've got two micro switches that are attached to the outer sleeve, so they ride along with the, the locking mechanism. And then there's a couple of set screws or screws that, uh, using lock nuts, allow me to set and adjust very accurately when I want that switch to be actuated. And that way I, get, uh, I don't get false positives. It's set very, very closely so that when this is closed, it will be an on signal. But if I back it up just even ten thousandths of an inch, it's indicating that this magazine, uh, the outer lock, is not open or not closed, depending on which switch. So 
that's probably the most finical adjustment on the whole system. Now we'll take a look inside uh, the magazine so you get an idea of what's where and why. Um, this area here accommodates the ring that's on the uh, PCB drills. All PCB tools have these rings on them. In our case, we use them as a keeper uh, in a pilot when we load it in and out of the magazine. So that ring fits into this pocket. The pocket is machined deep enough to accommodate the height of that ring and a little bit extra. It's probably about five thousandths extra deep. And the diameter of the board hole relative to the sleeve is probably in the neighborhood of about five, maybe ten thousandths of an inch larger. I did have to machine it a couple of times uh, due to some changes in the system along the way. The clearance hole down in the the, the core of the magazine, this solid block of aluminum, uh, can accommodate, I want to say it's a 156 thousandths diameter drill, which is actually bigger than the shank. The shank of these tools is one eighth of an inch or 0.125 inches. Uh, but I can accommodate any length all the way down to here, which is, I believe, about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarter. Uh, the outer sleeve that acts as our locking mechanism with these keyhole shaped uh, openings at the top, um, you'll notice that it's thicker here than it is here. This is eighth inch wall tubing and to minimize uh, the amount projecting above, because um, I got to have my collet come down on top of this surface and still clear, and to maximize the amount of shank that would go up in the collet, I machine this top surface away to uh, 0.062 or 1 16th of an inch. Uh, then that way I can come down with my collet face about 50 thousandths away and I have a lot of shank on the tool up in the collet. Um, luckily uh, these, these size, sizes of material, they interlock, fit nicely together, so no fitting or, or special attention was needed. Uh, to get the tubing to fit and slide nicely over the solid aluminum core piece. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of magic in here. Uh, most of it uh, has to do with this recess, uh, the equal spacing across them. It's exactly 800 thousandths of an inch between them. And in truth, I machine this on a mill first, a manual mill first, and then uh, when I put it on the CNC machine, I came back and then resized all these holes, the, especially this counter bore area here that holds the plastic uh, retainer ring of the drill, and resized this area on the outer uh, sleeve. Uh, so that everything was perfectly in line or in position on the actual CNC machine. Uh, now, should I ever have to move it, I'll have to very carefully realign it and reset pot number one or location number one as my zero point for the fixture. But all tools are expected to be in line and 800 thousandths of an inch apart. And the macro assumes that. Uh, when it makes the positional move to pick or place a tool in and out of the magazine. On the Centroid Acorn side of things, I uh, configured the software uh, to accommodate what I needed. I wanted to use a couple of VCP buttons, uh, so I went into the wizard and under preferences, VCP aux keys, I made sure that I had uh, my M58 and M57 uh, M functions there and assigned to uh, some keys, in this case, key 14 and 15. Also in the Acorn Wizard, I configured the outputs. In this case, on the Ether 1616 expansion board, I configured the last two outputs, number 47 and number 48, for this use. I also configured the VCP layout so that my two buttons are in the roughly the upper right hand corner for magazine lock, mag lock, and magazine unlock, M57 and M58 respectively. Centroid provides templates for some M functions. In this case, MFunk58 uh, is a pre existing macro template, and I modified that for my uses, and uh, it's really just two lines that I needed to add. 
uh, M95 uh, slash 112 turns on output number 112, and then M100 slash 542 uh, waits for the confirmation of the magazine open switch on input number 42. Very simple, very straightforward. Macro number MFUNK57 closes or locks the magazine. So by doing so, we're going to uh, use M94 slash 112 to turn off the output of uh, number 1112, which is also physically number 48 on the Ether 1616 board. Uh, the valving that I'm using is a five-way pneumatic valve, so I really only need to turn an output on or off to actuate the cylinder. Uh, the next code, M100 slash 50043, is used to force the system to wait until there's confirmation on the magazine lock or closed switch. Uh, and that way the system can't continue running until this is actually confirmed. The Centroid Acorn makes it very easy to connect your outputs and your inputs to the CNC control. The Ether 16 board gives you easy access and a lot of input and output capability. That's a pretty good overview for this video covering the magazine portion of this automatic tool change system. In future videos, I'll go through and explain the tool length sensor the uh, part height measuring sensor, the actuator that actually tightens and loosens the collet, uh, and I'll be covering some other topics about this CNC machine as well, such as uh, why I abandoned the Mach 3 software and decided to go with the Centroid Acorn software. I hope that you found this video interesting and perhaps even informative. I hope that uh, you would subscribe so that will help secure future development of videos sharing this type of information. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.